Oh, hey! Been a good minute. I bet you've been wondering when my next proper video was gonna release, and believe me, so have I. Let's put a pin in this. Well, I'm not exactly swimming in options here, but I always knew I was gonna have to look at this one eventually. So, for those of you that have your decks and your playmats ready, put them away. It's a video game, you're not gonna need them. Pay attention. And believe it or not, spoilers ahead. This is Digimon Digital Card Battle. Alright, so I knew Digimon World 2 was going to be a beefy project to tackle, but in my infinite wisdom, I decided to review it by playing it on original hardware and not on an emulator where I could use save states and speed things up. Wrapping that one up is going to take a minute. Eh, it's all good. In the meantime, there were some other games that came out on the PS1. They were released afterwards, but I don't mind doing things a little out of order for the sake of actually getting a review made. So first things first, yeah, this game is based on the Digimon TCG from around that same time. I actually had some of these old trading cards when I was a kid and absolutely loved looking at the art of each one. This style is something really special to me, and you know what? I actually still collect the cards from the new TCG now. As a matter of fact, I was able to afford the PC I work on because I actually pulled an insanely rare parallel Omnimon card and was able to sell it for a ridiculous amount of money. It was insane. Man, I just cannot stop looking through these. So much love went into this artwork, and I always get a kick out of filling out my collection for each set and seeing if I pull a particularly cool card. That's pretty much all I ever did with them, though, I'm not much of a tabletop guy, and as much as I enjoy the collection aspect of the trading card games, it's the game part I always had a tough time with. I don't know if it's my short attention span and inability to focus, or maybe I just have a tough time getting a grasp on all the rules and how the game is played. I don't know, it's just never really interested me, and the prospect of a video game emulating a failed TCG just never really appealed to me. Okay, failed in the States. The way the original card game was handled in North America was laughably mismanaged, and they changed the rules of what was apparently a perfectly fun and functional game in other regions and whittled it down into a mess that died off embarrassingly fast over here. Gotta recommend this video from the Jaywits if you're curious about digging further into that subject because it's a good video and he knows what he's talking about more than I would. All of that being said, I'm pretty out of my depth here. I don't know how this stuff works, but if Digimon World taught me anything, sometimes you just gotta suck it up, go with the flow, and sometimes you'll find ways to appreciate what you normally wouldn't give the time of day. And it's kind of appropriate to look to that game for inspiration because in a weird way, you can kind of look at Digital Card Battle as a follow-up to Digimon World. Okay, so not exactly, but there is still a bit of a connection. You see, this game that we got here in the US of A is, in fact, a sequel to a previous game that never left Japan called Digimon World Digital Card Battle. As you can imagine, my inability to read kanji kind of keeps me from being able to do much with this game, but according to the synopsis I found, this is an adaptation of sorts of the first Digimon World title, but recontextualized to fit with the format out of a card game. You may recognize the player character here as Mamayo, the same as in Digimon World. Just like in that game, he's called to the digital world, given a digivice and tasked with reaching Infinity Mountain and thwarting whatever evil presence is threatening the coded domain he's found himself in. There are more background details, but maybe I can tackle that another day if and when I'm confident enough to review the Digimon games from outside the North American region. You know, once the YouTube career is a little more self-sustaining. You know, totally unrelated note, but I bet your name would look great in my Patreon shoutout. For now, let's just focus on this title. Turning this game on for the first time actually kind of jump scared me. I grew up with the English dub of the anime, and it still has a very special place in my heart, but as I got older and tried to take in more Digimon media, I realized I had to take stuff like the English voices, the score, and whimsical music pieces I was so familiar with and just sort of pack them away in my brain. After that, I just sort of associated the franchise more with Japanese voice acting, the music of recent games, stuff like that. So when my system booted this disc for the first time, I was not expecting to hear... 
I mean, the lyrics are gone, which kind of makes this better by default, but I felt like I was slapped in the face by my childhood in the best possible way. Probably the last time I'm gonna hear something so directly tied to classic Western Digimon, but it was a fun surprise. Digimon Digital Card Battle follows a kid that once again looks like Mamayo. I don't think he has any direct ties to the kid from the first card game, even though he looks exactly the same. You know what, whatever. If I start thinking too deep about the lore to these games, I'm probably gonna lose just enough brain cells to finally go fully incapacitated. Your goal is to move between various cities here in the digital world and defeat opponents in card battles to become the strongest card tamer around. A simple goal, but more than enough to keep things moving. We start our little quest in the aptly named Beginner City, and here we can meet a friendly little Betamon who agrees to show us how the card game works. This was going to be the make it or break it part of the game for me. Given my history or non-history with card games, how well this tutorial was going to dish things out and help me understand the mechanics was really important and it's honestly kind of great. It's gonna sound silly, but I attribute part of this to how Bodemon is written here. Having an actual character walk you through the steps, show you how things work, and give you a chance to apply them in gameplay feels pretty perfect, and I can't imagine that getting all this information from more static text would be nearly as effective. I like the language he uses, telling you what rules he'll be ignoring during your test run so you can get a good feel for each mechanic on their own. It actually comes off as a buddy trying to show you the ropes rather than a textbook spouting rules at you. It's a really good gateway for kids that are trying to learn how to get into card games. Or grown adults who have no idea what they're doing. At the beginning of a match, there's a sort of coin flip to determine who gets the first move. From there, we move to our play setup. Each player has a deck comprised of 30 cards and draws out four cards from their fresh deck or online pile. The four cards you pull will move into your hand and this is what you're gonna start with. First thing you have to do is choose a rookie Digimon card, as most of the game is going to center around how you support and work around it. You can start with a champion or ultimate Digimon card, but this is the sort of thing you should always try to actively avoid unless you're down to your last legs and have no other choice. Because these cards can be really powerful and have a good amount of HP to fall back on for defense, but only if you build up to them naturally through the digivolving process. If you just try to start with a higher level card, all of its stats are totally kneecapped and you may even find yourself in a worse spot than if you were just using a rookie. Once your rookie Digimon is out, you can pull other cards to start building support for it. If you want to digivolve it, you'll need to build up your DP meter by sacrificing another Digimon card and once you have enough DP, you can digivolve to a champion level card as long as it shares the same specialty here represented by color. Once you digivolve, the stats of that card you choose to digivolve to will take over, replacing what you had before. So, if your rookie is really low on health, you'll get beefed up to the default stats of your champion card when you move up, but your DP will also reset to zero, meaning if you want to move from a champion to an ultimate Digimon card, you'll need to take a few turns to sacrifice more cards and build up the DP needed to do so. And obviously, your cards need to survive long enough to actually digivolve at all. The process starts with your draw phase, where you pull out your cards and choose from what you have in your hand. If you don't like what you've pulled, or you literally can't work with it, like if you don't pull any Digimon cards at all, you can discard what you've pulled and draw again. But this also means you have to discard all of the cards in your hand, and unless you get a card later that lets you draw from your offline pile, that card is gone now and you will not get to use it later on. And in case you're wondering, yeah, once you've moved through all 30 of your cards, that's it. That is all you get. You don't get to reshuffle and start over, so you really have to learn how to properly use the cards you have when they come up and adapt to new situations and improvise to the circumstances. So yeah, a bit of luck, but I don't think the game relies too much on chance. If anything, it relies much more on your sense of strategy and intuition. So once you're done with the drawing and digivolving prep phases, you move on to the battle phase, and this is the part that feels particularly interesting to me because I don't think it's the sort of thing that would really work in a real physical card game. Although a friend did explain to me that a version of Magic the Gathering does kind of have a mechanic that works sort of like this. Each player picks one of three available attacks at the same time, with each one being mapped to the triangle, circle, or X buttons. I know it's technically the cross button, but that will never sound natural to say. The trick is, at this point, that decision cannot be changed and the players do not know what the other has chosen and this is important for a couple of reasons. Each Digimon has different levels of attack power set to these three attacks and as you can imagine, the higher level Digimon you have, the higher these values will be. Circle is going to be your most powerful attack and is great for finishing off opponents. Triangle won't be as powerful, but usually has fewer defenses that can be used against it and X is going to be an ultimately weaker attack, but a lot of Digimon cards will have special effects tied to it as well. 
For example, an opponent may be using a card that actually has no attack power set to the X attack, but the special effect it has can counter your circle attack if that's what you've chosen and turn the damage against you. It doesn't stop there though, as once each attack has been chosen, each player will choose a support card. This could be another Digimon card that grants you a special effect like allowing you to attack first, or you could use an option card and these things can have a huge variety of effects. This can be stuff like boosting your HP or more interesting effects like reducing your opponent's attack to zero or double your attack power if you and your rival are using different types of attack. Some of these support cards can get tricky too, maybe even changing a Digimon specialty to keep them from being able to Digivolve or at least make it harder. Some have a bit more risk involved, like cutting in half not only your opponent Digimon's HP, but also your own, or swapping which attack they're using. Don't have any card in your hand but want to use a support card? You actually do have an option here, but it's a gamble. You can pull a card from your face down pile of cards and place it into your support slot, and it isn't revealed until it's actually put into play. There is a chance that the cards you pulled won't actually have an effect, or it could do something that may even be detrimental to your current situation, but sometimes it really just might do the trick and help you manage a win, and that is always, always satisfying. There is a long list of option cards, and it's important to learn not only the ones that you have at your disposal as you obtain new ones and rebuild your decks, but also what your opponent has, because it can say a lot about how they strategize, but also how to properly prepare for their tactics and bounce back with your own. What's cool is there's an actual in-game battle animations that will play when your Digimon attack each other, and it's fun seeing these guys in action. There's a surprising amount of energy given to each of these creatures, and they feel like they really have some weight behind them as they go in for the kill. They also take a while to get through and can be a bit of a pace breaker if you're just trying to grind through some matches, but thankfully, you can toggle these animations on or off during the matches themselves, and it helps the gameplay go by much faster and feel easier to play through several matches at a time. In order to win a match, you'll need to knock out three of your rival's Digimon cards during these battle segments before they can do the same to you. And you'll need to plan out your deck so you have plenty of rookie Digimon at your disposal, as well as a few champion and ultimate ones to Digivolve to, and beef up your tactics with some well-planned option cards. Try to get familiar with common tactics. Try to assess what advantages and disadvantages your opponent has and predict their actions. Pay attention to whose turn it is and when your rival gets to choose their support card first, check what its effects are and respond in turn. Keep your wits about you, play smart, and knock out those cards. And yeah, as you defeat opponents, you'll move around between several locations, obtaining new cards to add to your arsenal, and matching up against different rivals who specialize in different tactics. I wound up using a red or fire deck throughout most of my playthrough, with a heavier emphasis on attack, but I tried to keep some option cards in my deck that could help me digivolve faster by skipping the DP or even champion level requirements for getting up to higher levels or at least beef up my HP to make up for my lack of defense. Other card specialties of other colors have differing benefits. Like some cards are weaker on the attack but have a higher HP pool. Some specialize in messing with a specific other type and rendering their attacks useless. No one card specialty is better than the others and there are just some that will click with your style more and since I found my preferred style fairly quickly, I decided to stick with it and I'm gonna be honest, I didn't really deviate from it that much. Maybe it was because my partner Digimon that I chose at the beginning of the game was a Vmon, another fire card, and I wanted to keep him available for play. Partner cards are interesting, and I think you can only get a max of two or three in a full playthrough. They're mostly like other rookie cards, but when you win matches, you can obtain new cards like I mentioned before, but also experience points for your partner card that will level them up after obtaining enough XP. This can help raise their stats and quickly become one of the most powerful and useful cards at your disposal, and it doesn't stop there. There. You can also earn new perks to give them that will change their special effect during gameplay, and at a certain point in the game, you'll receive a Digi Egg card. You can use this when pulling out your partner Digimon to instantly armor Digivolve them, which essentially gives them some boosted stats with no DP requirements, but you're also committed to that form now and won't be able to Digivolve to a champion or ultimate form. It is pretty useful. I don't use armor Digivolving all the time, but there were a few occasions where it really came in handy. You can also level up your partner Digimon at Fusion shops by sacrificing some surplus cards that you've collected and using them as XP to lend to your partners. And yeah, there is also a card fusion mechanic, and uh, yeah, you grab some extra cards, smash them together and get something new out of it. I, I'm gonna be honest, I was taking in enough information from this game already and this whole system just sort of intimidated me. I couldn't even begin to tell you how to properly strategize smashing all these things together to get desired results, but I'm sure there's some guides out there. Just take it from me, you can beat the main campaign without paying too much attention to this.
As you venture forth to become the strongest Digimon tamer, you will need to travel between several different cities in the Digimon world. You can speak to other card tamers in the Battle Cafe, where some of them will give you tips, and on rare occasion will even gift you helpful cards. And you can challenge them to a rematch if you've already gone up against them before and want to obtain new cards and experience. But the real action is in the Battle Arena, where you'll usually need to battle through several opponents in a row, and you don't want to lose any of these matches either, or you'll have to start over. Thankfully, if you've beaten three matches in a row, the game usually gives you a chance to save. This way, you can just boot up your save file if you're having trouble taking out the last couple matches in an arena, but once you're in that arena, you only have your three prepared decks and won't be able to edit them until you've beaten that area or abandoned it. That said, as you progress further into the digital world, a lot of Digimon you play matches against are starting to act more and more aggressive, and you eventually run into other humans. You might recognize some of these guys too, they're characters from the Digimon Adventure O2 anime. They don't have a lot to share here though, mostly confirming that, yeah, something is up with the other Digimon around here and that they're all acting strange. Soon you start going up against this Wormmon in his various forms claiming that he's fighting to make someone named Ken proud, another human he seems to both respect and fear. So Ken, huh? I guess this is just straight up O2, isn't it? As you continue to encounter and defeat Wormmon, he becomes increasingly more desperate to beat you as to not disappoint Ken, but eventually just starts trying to beat you for himself, developing a sense of resolve of his own, and in time, you finally get to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ken. Some nice friends you got there, Davis. He proclaims himself as the Digimon Emperor, using his abilities to manipulate and control the other Digimon you've encountered up to this point. And he actually went down pretty easily. Like, he's not a pushover, but I wouldn't really say he's that hard to beat. Once you do best him, though, he just sort of mellows out. Pretty anticlimactic, but to be fair, he wasn't really the big bad here, just an obstacle along the way. True, Ken was having an effect on the Digimon in this world, hypnotizing them and controlling them to act more violently, but even once he's gone good, there's still an unsettling shadow looming over the digital world, and it's felt by many of the inhabitants, including this Rosemon you keep running into. Actually, the first few times you encounter her, they try to keep her name a secret, which is silly? Like, finding out her name doesn't really mean much, especially since it's revealed that she's not even actually a Rosemon. In fact, she's not a Digimon at all. She's actually something of an antivirus program who's trying to push the player in the right direction to locate and smoke out some kind of dark force that's threatening to drown the world in darkness. This force is known only as A, but it isn't elaborated on much yet. After a long travel, defeating some of the strongest card tamers out there and earning the respect and trust of several powerful Digimon, you gain access to the Infinity Tower and beat your way through all of the Dark Digimon there until you finally make it to Venom Iotismon, a dark and powerful being who's aiming to bring darkness to everything. He does put up a good fight too, he would actually be a pretty good final boss, but that is not the role that he's playing here. Once he's down, the mysterious A finally shows up in a way I was not expecting. The game sort of gets taken over. Like, not the card game, I mean the PS1 game. Not literally, obviously, but I really wasn't expecting a moment this meta as PC windows pop up all over the screen and we see code being input as A takes over Venom Iotismon as his avatar and makes his grand appearance. Or maybe I should say reappearance. As the background distorts, the music fades, and a droning, creeping sound takes over the atmosphere, we see the true identity of A. The Analog Man. Who saw this coming? It's an amazing twist. Like the last thing I was expecting from this card game spin-off title was the foreboding and shocking return of the main villain from Digimon World. I actually think this makes me like him more as a villain. It's a really, really cool moment. To be fair, I think it's implied that this is more of like a digital copy of the Analog Man, not the physical human we've seen before, but man, what a cool moment. It is so good. He gives you a chance to arrange your deck before facing him, but you cannot save. You cannot escape this area. All you can do is prepare and face him. If you fail, you come right back here, stuck in a loop with your enemy until you can best him. And uh, yeah, he's, he's hard. He's very hard. Given that he's hacking his way into this finale to begin with, he can just ignore half the rules of the game. His cards don't shuffle. He just has a set pattern for the cards that he pulls into his hand at the beginning of the match, and this stuff is just straight up broken. Instantly warping his Digimon to an ultimate form and stacking his HP to over 3,000. This is crazy. I felt kinda hopeless here. It took me a couple of tries, but I was able to knock out the previous matches in Infinity Tower, but this... No! I didn't think I could beat this. 
I almost didn't finish this part. It was so daunting, but after stepping away from it for a few days, I was able to come back and this time, I had a plan. First thing to keep in mind before going into this battle is talking to Ware Garuruman in the Battle Cafe of Wiseman Tower after beating him and he'll hand you a very, very helpful option card. Shuffle this into your deck and get yourself prepared with Digimon cards that can counter circle attacks, which Analog Man will usually default to. Because of the nature of the counter ability and the option card you picked up, you can actually rely on the abilities of your rookie cards more than you would think here. I got my affairs in order, blitz through Infinity Tower one last time and challenge Analog Man again and wouldn't you just know it, my first hand won me the game. I pulled out my rookie, waited for him to stack up his HP, and placed my support card, a hacking card where if you have less HP than your opponent, your HP stats are swapped. The rest of it wasn't exactly a cakewalk, he almost managed to crawl back up and take me down, but after a really fun, really intense car battle, I beat him. Considering how much I was dreading tackling this game, I could never have imagined how satisfying this conclusion was. Well, main conclusion, yeah, after you bring peace to the digital world, there is more to do. If we're being honest, this is hardly even halfway through the full contents of the game. But I already know that everything after this pretty much amounts to post-game fluff, grinding out battles, collecting cards, stuff like that, and maybe I'll tackle that at some point. But for now, I saw the credits roll, and I am satisfied with what I played here. What a cool, pleasant surprise. I don't know if this turned me into a fan of card games in general, but, and I never thought I was gonna say this, after playing through Digimon Digital Card Battle, I'm tempted to give real card games a try now. I know this and the real TCG probably work under wildly different mechanics, but still, this has planted an interest. In terms of a recommendation, I can only speak as a card game novice, a total rookie, but I had a really good time with this. It does have its drawbacks, mostly in terms of its pacing as a video game, and the narrative outside of that really cool ending is just sort of there, but who cares? This was a good time! You don't need to drop everything for this, but if you're curious about it, let it be known that even though I was sure I was going to hate this experience, I finished this game with a smile on my face. And we've got more on the horizon, and don't worry, I won't make you wait nearly as long for the next video. Probably gonna be skipping the April Fool's Day special this year, mostly so that I can stay focused and keep things rolling along in a natural way. Which video is coming next? Not gonna say anything just yet, but you won't have to wait long for it. Until then, remember that my top tier patrons get to see these videos two days early. You can find me on Twitter, Twitch, Discord, Sunset City, whichever you prefer. Links in the description, and of course, as always, Spread the word, tell your friends, and until we see each other again, thank you so much for watching. See you next mission. Hey there everyone, thank you so much for watching, and thank you for your continued support and patience as I've sort of been, you know, sorting my life out and just getting to the point where I could actually make videos again. I really do appreciate it. Things do get busy, I do have a full-time job on top of this, but one day I do want this to be the full-time job, and that is made possible by the support of people like you, the viewers, and of course, my wonderful supporters over on Patreon. Right now, I'd like to give a very special shout out to my current top tier patrons. Brendan Hess, Broski, Earl Valko, Jeremiah Harrison, Lederick, Mackenzel, Mr. Dr. SP, Dr. Pending, Nickelplated, Patricia Marcou, Cinderin7, and Cirrus the Skeptic. Thank you all so much for your support. You make this possible and you make it worth it. With all of that said, I've got more work to do. See you next mission.